Hello, the void that is the internet again. Me here to talk about the Oscars. I have no credentials, I have no film experience, but I watch a lot of movies and I love them. So you should listen to me and take my word as gospel. I feel compelled to say that I'm joking there. I, I would like to think that it's clear that I'm joking, but I'm joking about that. Not about not having credentials. All of that is true. Um, but taking my word for gospel, uh, definitely don't do that. I don't even do that. Like, you definitely shouldn't. Anyway, what am I talking about today? Oh yeah, I'm talking about the Best Actress nominees. In case you haven't watched my other three Oscar videos, let me go ahead and explain what I'm doing here today in case the title wasn't clear enough for you. I'm going to be going down each of the nominees, sort of saying why I like the performance if I did. Spoiler alert, I like all of these performances. Um, and also how they could win, what each do well, sort of their stats, if they've been nominated or have won before. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be doing all of that today, and I don't want to waste any time, so let's go ahead and get started. First up, we have Jessica Chastain in the eyes of Tammy Faye, scoring her third ever nomination, previously nominated for The Help in Zero Dark Thirty. I had put off watching this movie for a few months, so I watched it the other night, and I, I was really curious to see how good she was in this, because she's actually won a couple of awards here. Uh, first off, I just have to say, the this category has been kind of a mixed bag because a lot of different people have been nominated, a lot of different people have won, so it's kind of a toss-up, um, but she is won two at this point, so I was thinking like, okay, like maybe she's the front runner, I really need to watch this movie, obviously, and oh my god, she is so good here. She plays a real-life person named Tammy Faye. And on the surface, whenever I look at the things that Tammy Faye did in life without digging too deep, I would look at her and be like, this isn't someone that I want to root for. Without diving too deep into it, some of my least favorite people are those who exploit something that people care about for their own crazy amounts of profit. And if I were to just look at Tammy Faye's life, or at least the beginning of it, I would say, it's that kind of person, I don't support her, like... How am I going to care about her? But I, Jessica Chastain has said in interviews that this movie took her 10 years to make. So I was I was thinking going in, like, okay, clearly she cares a lot about this character. She wants to get it right. Like, what is there, bit, like, under the surface about Tammy Faye? I have to say, Jessica Chastain really added a lot of depth to this character who, if I had been alive while her TV show was running, I would have looked at and been like, you're just flaunting other people's money, you're not using it the right way, they think it's going to this, but you're actually using it for this. But she shows that that isn't who Tammy Faye was. In fact, that was mostly her husband. It, as long as this movie's accurate, I trust the filmmakers and I trust Jessica Chastain. But they go beat for beat through her life, showing you how she became the person that she is, and that through all of it, she's just a good person who just got wrapped up into something and is actually extremely insecure about herself. And I mean, Jessica Chastain, whenever you like look at her performance, it's easy to look at it and be like, oh, she's doing a goofy accent. She's acting really happy, but she does something that I love. And that's she displays those features about her character, which is what Tammy Faye was like in real life. But she adds so much background to why she's behaving that way because she's trying to get people to like her because she didn't grow up in an environment where she was just, I guess, accepted by her parents or I guess at least her mother. I know it's probably more complicated than that. Um, they go deep into that in the film, but um, uh, Jessica Chastain just added a lot of depth to someone who I probably wouldn't have liked if I had just read like, a five sentence paragraph about her. She was someone who was a genuinely kind and real person. And I have to say right now, respect to Jessica Chastain and the other filmmakers here for shedding light on this person who probably a lot of people didn't know a whole lot about, who actually did a whole lot of good for different groups of people. Uh, so Jessica Chastain, like, yeah, she's a great actress, and she's fantastic here. Well done. Next up, we have Olivia Coleman in The Lost Daughter. And I said previously in my Best Supporting Actress breakdown that I had to rewatch this movie uh, specifically for Jesse Buckley's performance because I just missed a whole lot of it the first time that I watched it. And... Man, I'm so glad that I did because I picked up on so much more of Coleman's performance as well whenever I did that. First up, Olivia Coleman is one of the best actors working today. This is her third nomination, I think, in four years, and she actually won in The Favorite. And her performance in The Favorite, guys, 
there are levels to this. Her performance in The Favorite is on another dimension as like most other acting performances that I've ever seen. You have to watch that film and watch her in it. It's incredible. But in The Lost Daughter, Coleman plays a super complicated person who is dealing with a lot of regrets from her past, and she isn't really sure if she can make good on, I guess, her past mistakes. She is both a very independent person. It's blatantly obvious that she's that way in this film. I mean, in the movie, she's going on vacation by herself. I don't know if you can get more independent than that. But she's also someone who seeks admiration from others while at the same time if she gets too much attention she starts feeling judged so there are a lot of layers here and it's clear that this person has been through a lot and i actually love that the film separated the movie out by jesse buckley playing the younger version of the character and olivia coleman playing the person whose kids have now grown up and is dealing with her past mistakes so you get a lot of that background as to what exactly happened here and coleman does a really good job of also showing the confusion on this person's face whenever she doesn't even know why she's doing some of the things that she's doing in the movie i mean the main plot line that I'm not going to spoil here because I really do think that if you haven't seen The Lost Daughter, you should watch it. Um, it. The main plot line here is all hinged on the viewer being like, why are you doing that? It's like such a pointless thing. A lot of people are struggling with um, something that is lost. Spoiler alert, it's not a person, it's not a daughter. I know the title is The Lost Daughter, but just stay with me here. It's not a lost daughter but a lot of people are dealing with something being lost and they're very upset whenever she has a very easy solution that she's choosing not to do she gives off the persona of someone who could either be kind or sort of stand offish depending on how you treat her but if you treat her poorly an excellent example of what could happen is the theater scene in this movie when a couple of teenagers are just a little bit too loud a little bit too obnoxious and she has a total mental breakdown and a lot of that is just her dealing with her own stuff um but olivia coleman is just excellent in this movie she plays a character who's extremely complicated well but you also see where she's coming from and you can see that she is conflicted she's not complicated for the sake of being complicated you as the viewer understand that there's a lot that this person is going through that doesn't make what she's doing right um but it makes you relate to her a little bit more. Overall, this is one of the more solid performances that I've seen of the year. It's no surprise to me that she got the nomination, and I'm looking forward to more great performances from Olivia Coleman in the future. Up next, we have another former winner in Penelope Cruz, who stars in Parallel Mothers. I just want to say, I had to really try to watch this movie. I obviously wanted to make this video series, so I have to watch all of the different performances, and whenever the nominations came out, this is one of those that I hadn't seen, and whenever I looked up my local showtimes, it was getting ran out of theaters like the next day, so I basically had to go straight from work to the theater, or else I just was not going to be able to watch Parallel Mothers, and at the time, it wasn't on streaming, it wasn't going to be available to rent, and I didn't know if it was going to come back into my city before the nomination ceremony. Yeah, I don't know why I bring that up, I'm just putting that out into the ether that I had to try to watch this movie, and I succeeded, but also I'm really glad I did, because Penelope Cruz is stellar here. Her performance actually reminds me a lot of Olivia Coleman's, where the primary plot of this movie, on the surface, you would look at it and be like, I can't support what this person is doing, this is irresponsible, like, why would I follow this person? Um, but then at the same time, Penelope Cruz, through her performance, also gives you a whole lot of background on the person and gives you a lot of why she's doing the thing that she's doing. So you don't hate her. You can't support what she's doing, obviously, but you understand it a little bit more. I will say what she does in this film is a lot worse than what Olivia Coleman does in The Lost Daughter, but nonetheless, the performances were kind of similar in that way for me. Penelope Cruz is on screen for basically the entire movie so if she isn't good in the film the film isn't going to be good but guess what penelope cruz is a fantastic actress so the movie is great 
And I think it says a lot in a foreign language film whenever the performance of an actor or an actress, you know, goes beyond the language barrier. Because this is a Spanish film. I don't speak a whole lot of Spanish. I say that like I know a little bit of Spanish. I know exactly enough to walk around in Madrid for 10 minutes, order a coffee, and go straight back to my Airbnb. <laughs> so I don't know a whole lot of Spanish. But going into this as a non-Spanish speaker, I have to say, like, Penelope Cruz... You freaking nailed it. This is just a great performance that has a lot of grief behind it. Whenever certain things come to light here, you really do feel for her character. And you see the dilemma that she's in to the point where she knows she needs to make the right decision. It's going to be really hard. She doesn't get there immediately. But you do see growth in her character, I guess, through her performance as the character to the point where you can still like keep rooting for her to like not keep doing what she's doing but to make the right call and you know that she's going to so yeah i just really like penelope cruz in this um i don't think that she's going to win here but don't worry she has an oscar on her mantle already from vicky christina barcelona um so she has been recognized in the past which i'm very happy about um but very happy that she got nominated here totally deserves it parallel mothers if you speak Spanish, you'll love it. If you don't speak Spanish, you'll love it too. You should definitely watch it. Now we have Nicole Kidman who plays the legend that is Lucille Ball in Being the Ricardos. And for me, Nicole Kidman, she kind of falls into the same boat as Will Smith for me, where she is like so famous that it's hard to watch a movie where she's in it and not be like, that is Nicole Kidman playing this person. Like, her name is what? I don't know. She's Nicole Kidman. So it says a lot whenever a performer can surpass that and get you to believe that they are the character that they're playing. And I have to say, I, I was very... I hate to say this, but I was kind of critical of this movie going into it. Like, I didn't love the trailers. I thought, okay, like, this exists to get Nicole Kidman an Oscar nomination. I'm going to sit through it. I'm going to watch it. We'll, we're going to see what happens. Like, hopefully it's good. But I, I was worried that this was just going to be an over-the-top Lucille Ball impersonation. And it was not that at all. Uh, she, I mean, she nails the character whenever she's... Lucille Ball playing Lucy on the show, but something that I think really puts Kidman over the top here is she adds so much to the person Lucille Ball actually was. She wasn't just this goofy person that everyone saw on their television every single week. She was someone who cared so much about her show to the point where she is critiquing every single little thing that the writers say because she's worried about her character coming across as stupid. Uh, there's, uh, I mean, there's a running thing in the show where it's Lucy entering into a scene and that is a huge sort of, I guess, sensitive point for her because everyone's just trying to brush it off. Like, you know, Lucy, it's a joke. Get over it. Nobody's going to think she's dumb, but Nicole Kidman pulls off that side of Lucille Ball. That was that I guess made her so successful in that she was obsessive about how her character was going to be portrayed. And at the end of the day, she was right. People can give you so much crap about you're paying too much attention to this. Like, why does that matter? But at the end of the day, something that Lucille Ball understood, it's that the devil is in the details and you have to get those right. So I love that Kidman brought that side of Lucille Ball onto the screen and being the Ricardos. She honestly brings everything to the table here that... Uh, that would lead me to believe that she should win an Oscar. I didn't even see that the first time that I watched the film, but the more that I watch being the Ricardos, the more that I can recognize that she is delivering like one of the best performances of her career, which is saying something because she has already won an Oscar. Um, her and Javier Bardem are fantastic in this movie. J.K. Simmons too, everyone really. Um, but yeah, I just really love her performance here. It wasn't just an over-the-top caricature of Lucille Ball. It was a true portrayal of Lucille Ball and also why she was so successful. Last person that I have to talk about here is Kristen Stewart as Princess Diana in the movie Spencer. And if you watched my Oscar predictions video, you know what my feelings are about this performance. The first time I watched it, I walked out saying that's the performance of the year. 
Like I cannot imagine anybody else being that good. And so before I made this video, I wanted to be absolutely positive about my feelings about her performance and sort of if I still felt that way. And after rewatching this movie along with all the other movies in this category, I have to admit the field is a lot closer than I thought it was previously. Like, you know, Kidman has moved up for me. Chastain, I hadn't even seen her performance before like last week. Um, so I, I gotta say, I think I jumped the gun a little bit whenever I said that anybody else winning here, like, I don't, like, I think Kristen Stewart is the winner here no matter what. Um, I jumped the gun there, but with that being said, I still want her to win here. Even after rewatching Spencer, there's no way for me that you can watch this movie and say that she's anything short of excellent. Uh, sure, there are, there's like one scene in the beginning where it's like, oh my goodness, that's Kristen Stewart doing a British accent, like, uh, you know, here we go, two hours of this, um, and then there's one scene, I will say, that I noticed rewatching it, where she's walking down a hallway, and she's yelling, where you can see, like, the accent starting to slip a little bit, so, like, it's not perfect, like I thought it was in the past, but aside from those very nitpicky things, what Kristen Stewart does excellently here is she plays someone going through so much anxiety and it's a true portrayal both in her performance and just the direction as a whole uh it's a true portrayal of what someone like that is going through whenever they are just in a pressure cooker of a situation where they have so much expectations from all people around them and they are led to believe that everything that they do is wrong and they can't be themselves Kristen Stewart does everything that she needs to in this movie to give that off and she just like she takes the ball and she runs with it and she makes you to believe that she is princess diana and not just the anxiety portion but just the total paranoia that everyone around her is out to get her and that no matter what she does she will never be good enough and there are always going to be eyes on her whenever i rewatched it a uh, a second time i noticed a common theme in this movie was uh, everybody hears everything everybody sees everything and for someone who has as much anxiety as princess diana in this movie that does not help you and you end up being super paranoid to the point where you can't even really be to an extent respectfully and a excellent mother to your children now i they do a good job of showing her to be a good mother here but there is a scene where her oldest son basically has to like monitor her and make sure that she is okay um, but anyway, Kristen Stewart here is just, I think that she's excellent throughout the entire movie. She does everything that she needs to in portraying this character and making you really believe that Princess Diana was going through this. The events of this movie are fictionalized, but the emotions are all there. And for me, it made me really feel for the real life person and want to learn more. Since I watched this movie, I started reading a book about Princess Diana, and I just can't get enough of who this person was. And this movie just makes me so sad to think that the real life person could have been going through something like this. Lastly, I have to say she nails the voice and the overall look at Princess Diana. If we're gonna compare her to the real life person, she absolutely killed it. Uh, she is not the Twilight girl anymore, in my opinion. The same way that Robert Pattinson is no longer the Twilight boy anymore uh, since he just starred in the Batman. But that's a story for another video. Okay, now who's gonna win? Like I said earlier in the video, this is a hard one. A lot of different people have won it. Most of the people nominated here weren't even nominated for the BAFTA, which for like the last 10 years, the BAFTAs have predicted the winner in this category every single time. It's actually weird how accurate they get it, but that's not going to happen this year because the person that won the BAFTA isn't even nominated here, so that streak ends. Um, gosh, look, I I want Kristen Stewart to to win this um i think that she delivered one of the best performances of the year in any category in my opinion i i think that everyone here is excellent i think chastain is incredible i think penelope cruz and olivia coleman pull off a lot um under the surface there in their performances and i think nicole kidman uh, overall is just great in being the ricardos and bringing across a side of lucille ball that a lot of people didn't know was there um, but whenever it comes to predicting the winner, I, I, I want to narrow it down to Jessica Chastain and Nicole Kidman simply because Kristen Stewart 
wasn't even nominated for the Screen Actors Guild, and it's the actors that vote on this. Um, so I, I just don't see her winning here. Um, Olivia Coleman and Penelope Cruz just don't have the wins either. Nicole Kidman and Jessica Chastain have both won things here. Um, so I feel like it's going to be one of those two. I really struggle with this. Uh, um, both are very deserving, but I think I'm going to give the edge to Jessica Chastain for the eyes of Tammy Faye for a couple of reasons. One, because she won the Screen Actors Guild Award. And like I said before, it's the actors branch of the Academy that votes on this. So that is like very telling of where it might go come awards night. And then two, I think there's a lot of respect in Hollywood for what she did as a producer to get this movie made. She, it took her 10 years for it to get financing for the eyes of Tammy Faye. And so there was just a lot of effort behind it. Um, she brought to light a person who a lot of people at the time of her life didn't really like. Um, and they didn't really know a whole lot about her. And like I said, whenever I was talking about her, if you just handed me a five sentence paragraph about what she did in her life, I probably would be like, I don't really like her as a person, but Jessica Chastain and her performance showed that she did a lot for a lot of, I guess, groups of people that weren't getting a lot of support back in her time. And also just bringing to light that she was just a genuinely good person. And so I think her performance is excellent. She's gotten a couple wins and she did a lot of work as a producer. So at the end of the day, I think that it's going to be Jessica Chastain bringing home the Academy Award. I could be wrong. I fully back that win. I would be really happy with that. Um, but I will say if Kristen Stewart wins, I'm going to like jump out of my chair. I'm going to be so happy. So anyway, that's my breakdown over the best actress category at this year's Oscars. Who do you think should have been nominated that wasn't there this year? Do you think I got it right with Chastain winning? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time on the 100 Movie Marathon. Bye guys.